we lose? Who did we lose? Making your way over? Yeah, in my life, it, that, just like the game, it was too quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game's too quick. Oh my God, it's you're never late. It's cost. It's whenever, fun. whenever we're up in the gondola up there, and they say, "Where's Mech? I said, "He'll be here." In three seconds. He's here somewhere. He's here somewhere, <laughs> and there you are. Well, we'd Good like stuff. we'd like to uh, introduce. Not that you need one, uh, Derek Lalone, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings and Sean Horkoff, uh, assistant general manager and running the uh, Grand Rapids Griffins. So uh, thank you both for being here. The first question I have for Derek alone, and I, and I love your story and I love your family story and we don't want your family getting angry with you. I know it's uh, written the lawn, but you are La Lone with no D. Can you explain please? Yeah, that's correct. It's La Lone, long O-N-E. Um, Alex Tenge picks on me. I, I play both sides of the French card. Um, so in hockey world, it's, it's good to have. So my name, God-given name is Lalone. I have a father that was number 11 of a family of 12, uh, which was very common back in the French Canadian days. They moved over to the States uh, when he was young. And um, as I was growing up, I played my college hockey, professor would call me Lon, just kind of never corrected him. And now I started to coach coach college hockey and we were on a television game at the University of Denver and they did a little piece on me and it was you know the announcer kept saying Derek Lalonde, Derek Lalonde and I got to my office my poor Aunt Giselle who's about number eight or nine and has broken French Canadian speaking leaves me about 11 minutes voicemail on my University of Denver office phone <laughs> explaining to me that our last name is pronounced Lalone and it better continue that way. <laughs> so it, it, you get older and you know, now I'm gonna have kids. Uh, you take your name very serious. So yes, and I appreciate it when you guys always correct even on the national broadcast sometimes. Uh, but I appreciate it as Lalone, thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, when, when other broadcasters come in, that's our main thing. We try to get the names right how the players want them, and then they, they want to change. And I know as coaches, you guys never get players' names right, do you? Never. never. Nicknames. That's why we live with nicknames. <laughs> nicknames. They're all nicknames. Go ahead, Mick. Well, there's no challenge with Sean, Sean Horkoff's name, but the challenges that you've uh, taken on as an assistant general manager and the, the general manager of Grand Rapids, how has that uh, been for you? Uh, are you enjoying that trip so far? Yeah, it's been exciting. I think um, obviously where we are, you know, in terms of an as an organization, we have a lot of young players that are coming into the Grand Rapids uh, team right now. Um, you know, so it's a, it's an exciting time to, to, to be part of it because we got some young players that are really, really exciting and doing very well down there and hopefully pushing for spots in the near future. How much do you depend on your coaches down there as opposed to watching those young guys develop by yourself? Well, we depend on them enormously. I think they're the ones that get the touches on the kids every day. So obviously, we have a... You know, we have skill coaches, development staff, skating coaches that come in to kind of help them with the development side of it. But really, they're the ones that the players lean on for guidance. And, um, you know, it's a very important job for us. Kenny? Well, I, I want to carry in just that thought for a minute before we get back to Derek. Um, Sebastian Costa spent a lot of time in Toledo, uh, was the Red Wings' first round pick, tall netminder, and uh, goalies do take a while, so it's not like it shouldn't be where he is. Um, him, Simon Edmondson were, were two guys I wanted to touch on, and, and uh, Marco Casper uh, overseas. Yeah, um, well, with Coase, you know, he's done very well this year. And I think uh, the goaltending position is difficult. You know, you're there by yourself. Uh, you don't have a defensive partner, a couple, you know, forwards that are able to help you, help you along. So uh, the biggest thing with him is, especially with the COVID years, is just playing hockey games. And, you know, we kind of talked to him and had him involved. He didn't have to go down and play this year. He could have went back to junior hockey, but he felt like he was ready for pro and wanted that challenge and, and really embraced it. And uh, he's gotten much better. He's playing fantastic lately, made the All-Star game down there and is doing very well. Um, you know, Simon, Simon's done fantastic. You know, I think for him, he's a guy that we didn't really know what to expect coming into the year. He played excellent last year in the SHL, which is a very, very good hockey league in Sweden um, and didn't really know, you know, what he was going to do at the start of the year and kind of came in and, um, you know, it was kind of clear right off the bat that maybe he needed a little more time, a little more seasoning because he is such a young guy at 19. And, but he went down there and, and really, again, similar to, uh, you know, to Coase, he's playing his best hockey in the last 10 games or so. So, I mean, he's 6'6", he can really skate, um, 
know, I just think it's getting accustomed and used to the, the, the North American ice that, that he's going through right now. And Albrio Hansen's another one down there who's having a fine season. And the touch on Marco Casper. Uh, we don't know whether we're going to see him over here next year or not. Uh, what, what is the plan right now? Yeah, Marco, while well, he's signed, I mean, he should make the, the trip over here. He's actually playing in the playoffs right now. The way it works in Sweden, they have a best of three playoff to actually make it into the into the playoffs, which uh, starts for him tomorrow, I believe. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes for him and how long he goes. But um, we do expect him to kind of make that jump next year. And it's another one we're excited for. Question for Derek. Um, switching geographics uh, from Tampa Bay to Detroit is never an easy thing, family, et cetera. What have you, what have you taken out of this move for you um, coming to Detroit from Tampa Bay and being a head coach for the first time? Yeah, great question. Before we start, I, I hear the UD Jesuit hockey team is here. Can you boys stand for me? All right, perfect. So my boys go to uh, Jesuit in Detroit and they've had to sit out a couple uh, PH detentions for the same mullets you guys have too. So <laughs> I see uh, nothing's changed, but uh, it's a big part of our family back home in Tampa. And it's been a great experience for our boys. So thanks for coming. Appreciate that. So Ready to go, guys. So my family did stay this past year. Uh, school started literally August 3rd in uh, Tampa, and it just didn't make sense uh, turning them around this quick. They had their hockey teams, their travel teams. Uh, it made sense. So uh, the weather has been different. Now, with that said, this has been extremely mild. I was expecting a little more. So maybe be careful what I wish for. Uh, it's been a extremely mild. The transition has been easy because um, this has been an exciting season. Uh, as a first-year coach, you're – asked to come in here and hopefully make change. And um, you could feel the momentum. You could feel the momentum where we were. You know, that's exciting every day. And um, I know we touched on the group a little bit. Uh, this has been a really resilient group. Uh, I think they've overachieved all year. It was this group that put us in a position uh, pre-deadline, we were literally over the playoff line with games in hand. I know a ton has changed over the couple weeks here, um, but I guess what I'm getting to, it's been an easy transition as a first-time head coach because of what this group has done. So you've switched zip codes, but you haven't switched conferences and, and what have you. Uh, you know what you're up against with the, the, the big boys in the, in the Eastern Conference. Well, I think that's the reality of where we're at, but I think it's healthy. And I think it's exactly why we did what we did at the deadline. We did the right thing. It's very frustrating a little bit as a coach, but in our profession, there's a clear separation between management and coach, and you need that. Steve and Sean's job is to keep an eye on the big picture in the long term. My job is to coach the present, and we're doing that, we've done that, we'll continue to do that. And being in this division makes you realize how far you need to be to get there. Could we be in the West right now, be fighting for a playoff spot or even in a playoff spot? Absolutely, we probably would be. Uh, but what does that mean? Uh, when we get there, we wanna be get there for real, uh, and we wanna be able to stay there. And I know the one, when Steve and I talked about it, the, the thing that really resonated with me was of course, we're chasing the Bostons, the Torontos, the Tampa Bays, literally three of the top four or five teams in the entire league. But his job is to continue to chase the Buffalo Sabres of the world, the Ottawa Senators of the world who are ahead of us simply because they've drafted longer than high and higher than us. Um, so um, it's all part of it. Um, and that's the big picture. But I think it's healthy being in this division because if you get to the top of this division, uh, you're, you're towards the top of the entire NHL. Well said, and a, and a, a final thought along that line from you, Sean, uh, how you and Steve do balance what you're building and yet want to be competitive as the Red Wings have been most nights this year and in games, unlike a season ago, and that's been terrific. The youth and the experience that you had, how do you go about that? Um, well, I mean, patience, really. You know, I think our goal is just to continue to develop within. It's very, very hard to go up there. It's not like it used to be where you could just, in a seller cap, where you could just buy players. You know, it's very difficult to do that now. I think all these teams, you, you, you know, news you touched on the, the up-and-coming teams, it's all through the draft. You know, it's all through developing, and um, we're going to be no different. So I think it's a little bit of patience. Um, 
but at the same time, you know, when we do have an opportunity, which we're still collecting picks, but when we do have an opportunity to, to add good quality people, uh, good, good characters and good players, we're going to continue to do that and just try to make the team as, as, as um, you know, and give the coaching staff the best possible players to put the best product on the ice we can. Well, thanks to you both. I know you're usually doing this, but we're going to call for a line change now, so we're going to get the young kids out here, okay? So uh, <laughs> Dylan, Dylan Larkin, Moritz, Cider is uh, coming up here, and uh, Lucas Raymond are coming up. So we're going to change guys. on the John fly. Thanks, guys. and uh, Derek Lalonde. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I think we're good to go if you're good to go good look to at go. these beauties that are up here now let's start with the captain it's done the contract done i know it has to weigh on the back of your mind but uh, how happy are you right now in that regard yeah it's uh, really nice to get it done and uh to know that uh i'll be here for for eight more years and um it is a, a dream come true to be to be here and hopefully be a lifelong Red Wing. That's uh, that's what uh, would would really mean a lot to me. Your agent was mad at you, but you kept saying that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. But at least you're truthful. Yeah, we know that you never wanted to go anywhere. Seriously, I thought you're going to hold out for 8.71 for your number, but you know, <laughs> I thought that would have been. But uh, we're glad you got it done in eight more years. Wonderful, Mick. Well, these two these two next guys, they might in another year be looking for the, <laughs> those kind of numbers. Uh, your dad is quite the character, we understand. On the father's trip, uh, he was front and center. Tell us about your dad. Um, yeah, so he definitely had a blast. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, uh, I think seeing it from the dad's perspective, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them. Um, he usually never drinks, and then some of the dads <laughs> got him on uh, the vodka. Um, <laughs> I think everyone else know how it ended, so I never had to put my dad in, uh, into bed. And that was definitely the first and hopefully last time for, uh, for a really long time, let's put it that way. He doesn't, he doesn't drink German beer? Um, no, he actually hates beer. Usually it's, uh, it's either vodka or nothing. Uh, water usually, and uh, he definitely uh, was sticking with the water tell the him, day tell after. Tell him the next time he's in Detroit, we'll get him an IV. He can, he, he can stick it right for in his sure, arm. For sure, he deserves that. Lucas, you lived with Moritz last year, right? How did that go? It was a lot of fun, um, you know, complimenting each other. Uh, I think he's he's a little more structured than me, and so you're uh, messier. No, I wouldn't say messy, but uh, you know, he he he's good. We had a lot of fun. It was fun for both of us coming in at the same time, uh, kind of going through the same thing. So it was it was nice to have each other. How'd you guys share the chores? Who did what around the house? Cleaning. Uh, who, who washed the dishes? The machine? It, yeah, so it's basically me. <laughs> no, 60-40. Six, yeah, 60-40. He was, he was uh, taking charge of napping and, and calling his family. How about, um, how about cooking? Did either one of you cook? I mean, we have pretty good restaurants in Birmingham, I think. <laughs> and uh, been a lot better this year, though. Got to give us credit. Well, we, when, we were, when we were in the old days, it, we shared rooms. We didn't get our own room like you guys do. Uh, who had control of the remote control? Um, usually, I think it was golf uh, on right away, and we never even turned the TV off, I think. Sometimes we would come back from uh, road trips and didn't even forget to put the lights off. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely the bill uh, is a lot less this year than it was last year. Well, DT's got the red light going, so. Uh, he, Moritz lived with you his first year, right? Yeah. How was that? Uh, well, a couple of weeks. Uh, before the bef a month or two, and, and then you kicked uh, them out. Yeah, it was uh, my uh, my fiance now. Uh, she was she 
He was uh, his manners, and I, I do give him credit on that. He was very, very clean and and tidy. My my fiance, he was showing me up to my fiance. Oh, so I put it like that. <laughs> so he had to get out. I had to kick him out. <laughs> so, size, Lucas, you're not the biggest guy in the world. Having had the year that you had last year in your first year, you've gotten a lot of attention, to say the least, in your second year. How have you handled that with these big boys in the league? Um, I think you, you just, I've never been the big guy uh, ever playing, so, um, you know, I think it's it, trying to use your speed, agility, and, uh, and try to be quick. Um, you know, the game is moving to, to a really fast pace, so, um, yeah, I think that's just the biggest thing, trying to, trying to stick to your game. Have they been chirping you a little bit to try to get, a, get you off your game? Uh, no, mostly, mostly my own teammates, but uh, not, not, nothing crazy. Speaking of getting attention, you've gotten a lot of attention, Mort. Uh, you like to hand it out, but you're also pretty good at taking it. You don't mind uh, getting, your, getting muddy a little bit. How have you uh, adjusted to that kind of play in this second year? Um, yeah, I see like people are, are, are up my ass a little bit more than last year. Got away a little bit easier um, last year for sure. But um, no, I like that. Uh, I want to play an honest game, and I think... Uh, I don't have uh, anything to worry about because I know uh, there are guys out there like, like Benny who will always stick up for you. Um, you just go out there, have fun, and he will, uh, he will handle the rest for you. You know, we, we talked about trade deadline, and Mick said it's been, you know, like just a handful of guys, including you, Dylan, who were here the last time this uh, wonderful group all get to get, got together. And I know how emotional you were at the trade deadline, and people understand that and uh, you know we talk about who's going to be traded or who's going where and it's tough and it's tough on families and it's tough on life and we forget too often about the human factor um, what's it going to be like uh, for two straight games going up against Tyler uh, it'll be <laughs> it'll be fun um, you know that uh, that day was a was a tough one uh, I think um, you know kind of uh, the day before we traded Phil Veronic and and uh, um, I just signed the day before, and, and uh, then Tyler was traded, and, and uh, you know, Newsy brought it up uh, when, when he was talking before us that uh, we were right there. So, so there was a lot of emotions and kind of seeing that the team was uh, trading away good players. It was, uh, it was hard and uh, very emotional, but uh, I think um, seeing Tyler the, the next couple games, it'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be good to see him. And, uh, Boston have quite the team, so it'll be it'll be difficult. But we'll we'll probably uh, he'll probably do something out there that'll make <laughs> us laugh. It's <laughs> one way or the other. And I thought I thought Mick, you carry on that just a second. I, I thought you were buddies with Brady Kachuk, but boy, when you see it on the ice, what was he chirping you at that got you so pissed? Well, yeah, <laughs> that was um, you know he can't the night before kind of challenged our bench and and uh, um, at the end of the period, you know. No one can really jump on the ice without getting a penalty or, or doing something to, that would lead to a suspension. So the timing of that and, and then, uh, you know, the next game, uh, I hit him just, it was just a little bit late. Um, and, you know, he was he was wanting to fight me and do whatever. The, but, uh, so you know, for yeah, yeah, so much friends. for friends. <laughs> Hopefully none of that with uh, this weekend. Yeah. Okay, question for both these guys to my left. When you came up from wherever you came from, what was the biggest challenge that you had in trying to adjust to NHL hockey and the size of the rink? Start with Moritz. Um, I remember my first training camp, I uh, just ran into the boards because I didn't know how tiny it was overseas. <laughs> um, and then other than that, I think for us, both of us, it was just an 82 game schedule. Um, it's a lot easier this year. You adapt really fast and um, that was quite the challenge for me, for sure. Lucas? Yeah, pretty much the same. Uh, I think it's a much faster game here, uh, smaller rank. And uh, I think the biggest thing, like Mo said, was, was 82 games. It's, it's a big difference with a tight schedule, a lot of traveling, even if the travel here is much more comfortable than it was back home. But Was the rink size a, a problem for you or a, a big adjustment? Because as a winger, these big defensemen are on you a, a half a step early, and you don't have the room to go wide. Uh, yeah, both yes and no, I'd say. I think um, the biggest difference is when you're in the O zone, you're, you're kind of always in a scoring position. Uh, 
you know, and it, it makes the game a lot more more intensive. And at the same time, yeah, the the defense is closer as well. But um, I I kind of like the change, and uh, yeah, I felt comfortable in it. So you're more comfortable on the the hundred the hundred foot as opposed to the the, the Olympic size. Yeah, I'd say so. Two hundred yeah. foot long and yeah, yeah, hundred feet wide as opposed to eighty five. Yeah, yeah, I don't have the measurements, but yeah, sounds good. <laughs> One final question for you, Dylan, and, and the fans, because it's uh, where you guys are so competitive uh, pretty much every night uh, and in games this year and what the fans have meant at Little Caesars Arena, because we, we feel it. We're up in the gondola and the crowd and the packed seats. It's wonderful to see. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, it's something that uh, it's been a couple hard years, but this year the, the fans have been, uh, have been amazing. The, the energy they brought, the, the who's chance, um, the... They, they, you can feel when it's a big game and, and how into it they are. It's just been amazing, and I can't wait for, for playoff hockey in, in our building and with our fans. It's, uh, it's uh, something our fans deserve, and, and uh, you know, like uh, Hork and, and Newsy brought up, it's, it's going to be a, a process. They, they feel they're doing it the right way, but us players and, and I know the fans, we're, we're dying to get there, and it's going uh, to be really special. Sooner than later, I think. Thanks, guys, for uh, the entertainment this year. Good luck in Boston tomorrow and at home on Sunday afternoon again. We don't see you until Nashville. No, right? we don't. We don't get back in the in the booth until Nashville on Tuesday. Yeah. See, Mick, Mick and I, we have eight days off because the network took the game. We were just happy to put a tie on today, weren't we? Just to That's just it. to get out of the house. Yeah, exactly. I know you're out well, plowing. It's so fun your when you're, you're just watching. You know, it's not. It is not fun. You're out plowing your whole neighborhood. I know that. I try. I know. Good luck, guys. Have a good one. Thank you for this. Thanks to all the participants of the roundtables. Now we're going to get, uh, be able to hear from you guys. We've got a ton of questions that you've submitted, and we're going to ask some of the players. The first one, whoever's got the mics, is going to go to uh, Jordan Osterley. If you see where Jordan is, Jordan, you're one of three current Red Wings to hail from Michigan. What's it like to play for your hometown team? Yeah, uh, it's been a dream come true. Um, I was a free agent when it happened, uh, actually on my honeymoon with my wife now, so um, for us to be able to sign and that day we were leaving the honeymoon to come back home and play in front of family and friends, uh, it's something you dream about and uh, it's, been, it's been awesome. Terrific, thank you. Uh, next question is going to be for Joe Valeno, wherever the mic is. I think I saw Joe over here, yep. Joe. If the NHL went to Olympic-sized ice, we were talking about that earlier, which one of your teammates would struggle the most and why? <laughs> He's not going to like this, but I think DP, David Perra. <laughs> <laughs> He's always bragging how he's the fastest one every game, but <laughs> I think a bunch of us can agree that it's not always true. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I love DP. He's been great for us, and... Um, I, I think I would just have to say him. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Uh, we're going to find Jake Wallman. Wherever Jake is, the microphone to Jake. Jake, you've got great hockey moves and dance moves, too, because we saw you gritty after your overtime goal in Pittsburgh, so we know you've got those moves. So who do you think is the best dancer on the team, and who's the worst dancer on the team? Yeah, um, I was able, fortunate enough to do that um, celebration after a big win, but uh, got a couple characters in the room and um, gonna have to go to my tea partner here, Maurice Sider. He uh, <laughs> thinks he can dance, but I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I'd say he's pretty good. And then uh, worst dancer on the team, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna have to go to Ben Sherratt. I'd say he's, I don't know about his moves. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Uh, David Perron, next question. If, David, if you went to play paintball with your teammates, which coach or teammate would be your first target and why? 
Uh, it's a pretty easy answer, Aaron. Joe Valino, because uh, <laughs> he just shirt me in front of uh, everyone here. <laughs> Paybacks for sure, yes. Uh, next question to Ben Chirot. Wherever Ben is, over here, I think. Ben, if you could change one rule, one NHL rule, what would you change? Oh, wow. Uh, maybe icing, so when I hit... Uh, when DP for a breakaway or he misses it or falls down, you can still just go grab the puck and, and keep on going. <laughs> Tough question. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Magnus Helberg, next question. There he is. Um, if you could pick one teammate to watch your dog, who would you trust and who would be the last teammate you would ask and why? <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, Jonathan Berggren actually watched my dog, uh, even though he said that he lost his dog for seven hours uh, back in Sweden. But I trusted him with that, and they actually did a great job. Um, so I think he would get it the second time as well. The one I would not trust would probably be... Uh, uh, would that be uh, Lindstrom. Lindstrom. Uh, yeah, probably Lindstrom. And what's your dog's name and what kind of dog? Uh, his name is Rupert, uh, and he's a mixed breed that I actually saved from the street when I played back in China six Whoa. years ago. Yeah, wow. it's been the best, yeah. Well, for sure, keep him away from Lindstrom. So, uh, next question, Puce Suter. Where's Puce? Over here. Which one of your teammates, Puce, is most likely to be late? for the team flight, and who's usually the first one there? I'm late. I would say uh, Lindy, because he uh, really likes to sleep a little bit longer than usual, guys. Um, first, uh, I don't know, actually, because I'm usually in the middle, so, but... Uh, yeah, maybe who's, I don't know. All right, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. All right, we're going to uh, go to uh, Dominic Kublik next. There's Dominic. Dominic, you're drafting a soccer team amongst your teammates, a soccer team. Who's your number one pick, and who thinks they should be the number one pick but would probably be the last pick? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, uh Number one pick would be probably my, uh, myself, for sure. <laughs> I know that the uh, guy's not going to like it, but uh, Larks and DP always, you know, chirp me. But uh, I'm pretty sure they know that I'm the best there. But, uh, yeah, I just got to stick with myself. Perfect. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. Good. Uh, Oli Mata, you're next. Where's Oli? There he is. Oli, what is your favorite NHL arena to play in, and what's your favorite city to visit on the road? I like Montreal a lot. That's uh, good energy. Um, Boston is a good one, too. The uh, favorite city, it's got to be somewhere south. Um, L.A., Vegas, nice. Fort Lauderdale, probably those three. I'll go with them. Those are great. Uh, next question, Andrew Kopp, go blue. Where's Andrew? There he is. Andrew, who's the best card player on the team playing and who loses the most money all the time? I'm pretty sure I'm sending my kids to private school on Ben Sherrod's dime this year. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the other table, Valeno's not very good either, so those two are probably the worst, and I'll say DP is the best. Smart guy. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, Billy Huso, there he is. Billy, lots of goalies seem to get into broadcasting after their, play, after their playing career, including Ozzy and Jimmy Howard here in Detroit. Who would be a better broadcaster once you retire, you or Magnus, and who would be the best non-goalie broadcaster on the team? I guess uh, Magnus would probably be better because he, uh, he talks a lot too, so uh, <laughs> he can go with uh, Russia or Sweden or English, so... He, uh, he handles the language and um, um, non-goal, uh, you said non-goalie, um, I don't know, um, 
Um, I would probably, anyone from the team, I would see DP on that boot too. Just a pretty loud guy and um, <laughs> knows a lot about hockey. DP's getting out of love today. I can see that. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. Tremendous that you participate. And I'm going to turn this back over to Ken and Mickey. Before we wrap up here this afternoon and get our team on the way to Boston, I just want to take a moment to thank all of you here today for your great passion for the great game of hockey and the Detroit Red Wings in specific. We are very proud to have the brand on our uniforms and our chest as we walk about this world. It's been an icon of a brand for many years, Original Six, as most of you know, and it couldn't be better to be a part of an Original Six organization. For you guys and ladies of the Economic Club, thank you again for having us here. It's always wonderful since way back in the day when Mr. and Mrs. Illich bought this hockey club. They, they wanted people in our teams and our players to be involved in the community. We continue to do that and you guys are a great part of this community for many, many years. So thank you for that. And now well, let's introduce our team's uh, players and coaches and have everybody come up to the front, please, when we mention your name. We'll start with uh, assistant video coordinator, Jeff Weintraub. Video coordinator, LJ Scarpace. Goaltending coach, Alex Westland. Assistant coach, Jay Verity. Assistant coach, Alex Tange. Number two, Oli Mata. Assistant coach, Bob Bugner. Number eight, Ben Sherratt. Number 11, Philip Zadina. Number 18, Andrew Kopp. Number 21, Austin Zarnick. Number 23, Lucas Raymond. Number 24, Pew Suter. Number 28, Gustav Lindstrom. Number 35, Vili Husso. Number 38, Robert Hag. Number 45, Magnus Helberg, who, yes, could be a commentator when his days are done. Number 48, Alex Chason. Number 52, Jonathan Berggren. Number 53, Moritz Seider. Number 57, David Perron. Number 73, Adam Ernie. Number 81, Dominic Kubelik. Number 82, Jordan Osterley. Number 90, Joe Valeno. Number 96, Jake Wallman. Your captain, number 71, Dylan Larkin. Our head coach, Derek Lalone. And assistant general manager, Sean Horkoff. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your 22-23 Detroit Red Wings. Thanks, everybody. Have a great trip to Boston.